So we just finished kind of going around a little bit and uh, I'm just getting into the conversations. So the con the conversation today is super funnily and opportunities. I think people have, have read a number of books and they've implemented a number of systems that does sales funneling. Uh, but in terms of actually engaging the customer, many of the funnels themselves still require a great deal of manual intervention, either updating or recording or somehow uh, providing a human interface to a lot of what goes on in the sales process. And we talked about last month how orchestration, which is our term for marketing automation, can put in place a, a very firm strategic plan and then implement that tactically throughout some time frame. Uh, there's some other rules of thumbs. People had different opinions on this um, uh, timing wise. For example, I think I think promotions for events such as this should go out six weeks ahead, followed up by something about three weeks ahead, kind of a reserve the date and then a follow up to confirm the date and then something weekly and then something within within about two or three days of the event, the same day event, all of that automated. Uh, and that's what sales orchestration does for you. Uh, the funneling activity is a little bit different because here, what we're trying to do is uh, show uh, the actual objective, which is sales. That's why we call marketing automation sales orchestration, because we do more than just marketing in terms of what we try to accomplish as small business owners, right? We want to be able to communicate with the intent of establishing a relationship and converting that relationship into one of a long-term customer. So basically you have to do sourcing. There's networking. This is, there's no better way to do that. Social media has its benefits. Local networking has its benefits. Virtual conferencing has its benefits, but they all three also have their detractors. So it's, it's one of those areas where a rifle is barely the solution, but again, a scatter gun might be too much. It depends on the size of your business, your target audience, and what you're trying to communicate. And I'll get into that in a moment. Then once you have that established source and you've got that loaded into your CRM, ideally, uh, your customer relationship management system, you engage and that engagement, as we discussed last month, can involve things such as uh, electronic communications and emails. They can involve uh, print media that you're mailing out through a fulfillment house. They can involve phone calls, just ticklers, a little bit of uh, touching, but engaging them on a regular basis. Uh, we have at the latest count, something like 25 different social media sites for Exacta. And, and I don't know how many of you uh, would expect a business contact at the bottom to have, you know, all of their various links to their social media sites. That seems to be the, star the, the standard fare today um, for email signatures. But uh, uh, people also put down certification indicators. They put down their you know, primary phone number and maybe their cell phone number, other kinds of information in the signature. That's all great leading to what a kind of a, you're hoping that there's going to be some sort of passive reaction to the fact that you put this array of links at the bottom of your signature that people might click on if they're not already linked in with you or they're not already on facebook with you or they're on some site or other group um it's interesting for example on my my signature you'll find um an imdb link this is an example how many people do you know have imdb profiles my guess is you probably don't know an actor, producer, or director. I produced two films, and that's out there. So I think people will click on that just to see, oh, what's an IMDb profile look like for this guy, right? As it's very modest, but it is what it is, and it is enticing, right? It's a little bit of eye candy that might catch the eye and cause the person to react. So I'll, again, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, and it's going to be a bit of a rehash on what marketing is. And then finally, in that successful process of, uh, of funneling, you have to have a sustained mechanism. It has to be sustainable. A lot of SMBs, a lot of small, medium-sized business people don't really have funneling processes. They, their sales managers just expect the salespeople to provide a spreadsheet or a report 
which most of them don't really fill in or maintain until the day it's due. And then it's all this data entry uh, because they're really not uh, utilizing, say, a HubSpot or a CRM like Zoho or Salesforce for the reporting capabilities. And in fact, many salespeople kind of fear the use of CRMs because of the data intensity of a lot of, a lot of systems. So they see it really as an anchor around their neck. We as business owners, we as leaders in our organizations recognize that information and the use of that information is an asset. We don't leave money lying around, including petty cash. So why would we leave assets like information lying around without some sort of process and way of managing it? And so I, I can't encourage people more than, uh, than I have to look at those kinds of processes and management tools that would foundationally be part of a CRM solution in your organization. So with that said, uh, I'm gonna re I guess repeat the, my definition of marketing, which is the process of effectively communicating with a target audience to elicit an intended response. Now, the, I, I won't unpack this. You can go back to the video from last month on our YouTube channel to see where this all goes within the, the scope of what sales orchestration is. But I don't think we disagree with the fact that marketing is a process and therefore it lends itself to continuous improvement like any other process does, that the outcome of that is effective communication with a target audience the, and the prepositional Key word here is with, not at, not to, but with, because it's supposed to be engaging uh, and, and, and intended to elicit a particular response, whether that's clicking on an opt-in to download a free document or signing up for a demonstration or whatever that might be. It's really irrelevant. <coughs> that's specific to the SMB. But you would be amazed, as I said last month, you would be amazed at the number of people who graduate from marketing programs, two year, four year, even people with master's degrees, they've specialized in marketing and they cannot give you a specific definition for it. If it's anything more or less than this, I don't know what that is because if marketing isn't with intention to elicit a response, then why are we doing it? And, I, and at some point that marketing process needs to envelope or encompass a sales order, right? We got to request the order. We have to ask for the order. And um, that, that's all, that would be the, the pinnacle of a good marketing program. The success factors that we analyze too, and I'm rehearsing, just kind of rehearsing some of this for you uh, because uh, some of you were not there last month, and, but these are highlights of what I think are going to impact our further discussion on funneling itself. Um, marketing success factors include today very short, interesting messages with a call to action. So if somebody says, well, I'm doing this ad or I'm doing this promotion or I'm doing this mailing, a short, interesting message with a call to action. I think locally, and I think everybody here, I'm just looking at the attendees, I think we're all relatively local. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've heard of David Gruber. And this is not a commercial or promotion for him, but he has a great, short, interesting message that includes the call to action. One call, that's all. Great message with the call to action. Call me. One call, that's all. And, and the rest is left to the observer's imagination to, involve, you know, to really think about what that means to them. Or what it could mean. Um, audience demographics. Know who you're talking to and know why you're talking to them. Um, a lot of, uh, like we, we sponsor a woman's um, a business magazine that, and they have like 105 or so, 10,000 subscribers to this, 85% or more are, are women. Um, and so all the advertising is built around what we term as life work balance. Um, I think priorities matter, which is why I don't call it work life balance. I think we work to live, uh, not live to work. And so I like to put life first in the balance of the equation. It's kind of a personal trait of mine. And uh, that balance comes through in, in all of our pictures and all of our phrases 
in the marketing that we do with that magazine and with that uh, with those promoters. Uh, we know who the audience is and we understand their demographics. Uh, the the additional success factors, which are a little bit more measurable, are the uh, open, the forwarding, the opt-in and opt-out rates, basic analytics, very basic analytics. I'm not trying to get people into enterprise level business intelligence. I think that's coming. I think it's coming to the SMB near you at some point, especially as other tools develop with AI support, things like that, where you don't have to be an expert, nor do you have to be the one navigating the mouse and, and the, the dashboards to figure out what these numbers are. But these are very valuable. Without, without measuring it, you can't improve it. Very simple. If you're not measuring it, there's nothing to go from. So companies like Top Floor, which I'm familiar with, by the way, believes in analytics. And, and that kind of feedback is necessary in order to improve those things above. What you're saying, what the call of action should be, and who you're speaking to. When you can do these things, and you can do them as a process, you can establish cadence. Without regular scheduled communication, even small to mid-sized business people, even if you have fewer than four people working for you in your organization at the core, and that describes 12 million businesses in, in the United States today, fewer than four employees. Without cadence, you're off the radar. It's that simple. So when we talk about promotions and social media, we talk about marketing campaigns through email, whatever else we're doing, cadence matters. So you don't uh, flood uh, your, your target audience with too much communication uh, and uh, even indirectly by putting it out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so forth, those sorts of things um, help you establish cadence. But if they're not done in a methodical way, you'll have these periods of very intense communication and then periods of um, you know, almost desert-like uh, responses out there. And if you're off the radar and you're trying to do personal branding, product branding, or corporate branding, and you're not doing those things with sensitivity to the cadence or the lack of cadence that you have, it really won't matter how successful you are unless, uh, unless you throw a lot of money at it. It just doesn't work. It also creates a lot of chaos in the SMB itself trying to get things done. And that's, that's probably the hardest thing. So these systems today, I, I came up with this phrase a very long time ago, about 35 years ago, that a poor system worked with passion, a poor system worked with passion, outperforms a perfect system worked without. All you need to do is look at CRM. CRM implementations fail at least 50% of the time. And that's not even in, in achieving goals. That's just, they fail. People just don't maintain them. They don't use them. They, they've been poorly implemented because there's no heart and soul for a salesperson to come into the office and say, I'm going to sit at my keyboard today and enter in a whole lot of data. I can, I can give you another proof point on that. Who is the number one salesperson in healthcare? It's an open question. You can unmute your mics if you'd like to answer. The number one salesperson in healthcare in your life. Oh, that now that's interesting. I don't even know where to go with that answer. I didn't expect that. I think that's embracing it. There you go. Jamie did it. Jamie got it, right? Your doctor. Morale in the medical community among doctors, not 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 including the nurses and the unit clerks and the EMTs, or just the doctors, 54% of their time is spent sitting on a keyboard and a screen. There's no wonder they're demoralized. They want to practice medicine. They don't want to practice their typing. So uh, it doesn't matter how great the system is. It, it, it doesn't matter. If, if they're not passionate about using it, it's gonna, it's gonna fail. It's not gonna achieve the goals. <clears throat> now, how do you do that? Don't create new jobs for people that don't wanna sit there and do data entry. Find tools that will automate that. 
For example, you know, a camera that captures a business card and automatically analyzes that information and shoves it into your prospect group in your, uh, in your CRM. How many CRMs do that? I mean, you, you can kludge things together, but there aren't too many out there that do that. And then take that the next step and take a picture of somebody's email signature. Or take a picture of somebody's card with a logo that's very scripted, like Coca-Cola. Okay, that takes more sophistication than just simple data entry. And as I said, this isn't a sales presentation. I'm telling you that these are the possibilities of the technology that's out there today that help people embrace these systems and say, this is good for me. And now we go back to the earlier answer, who's, who's your number one salesperson in healthcare? It's the same thing here. There can always be the spokesperson and the primary contact, but it comes down to the battle being won or lost in your own mind as the employee or the, or the participant uh, with the system. Okay, that's all the preamble. So we have here the, the, the notion, the idea, the system design of the components of a funneling system that would involve the people, the process and the technology. The people are your disciples of discipline. If you don't provide a system that aligns your people to the goals of the business, you're missing the point of discipline. And that discipline, uh, even with management of these assets, is just like anything else. You don't leave checks hanging out. You don't leave cash sitting out. So don't leave information hanging out. Your people are your disciples. And ultimately you have to get them on your side. Uh, you can certainly coach folks, uh, but coaching isn't being on the team. It's actually not being on the playing field, right? We know the difference. And you can tell that in a football game where the, where the quarterback is also, say, an offensive coach. They're calling the plays on the field. They have that latitude. Uh, it's a wonderful experience. So when you're with the team and you're bringing everybody along, they become disciples of the process. Uh, the process itself should be streamlined and aligning at the same time. It shouldn't add work. In fact, you know, when you're looking at a rate of return, you shouldn't be looking at the return on investment because there really isn't a return on investment in software systems because it's, it's an area that's constantly growing. It's organic. It's dynamic. Um, and the actual upfront money is a minimum amount that you're going to expend over the lifetime of the solution uh, if you do it right. And, and in fact, it should pay for itself. The question is at what rate will it pay for itself? So we look at rate of return as opposed to return on investment uh, in, in defining these things. And I would recommend that in your organizations. So streamlining and aligning should identify those cost gaps or those cost issues and try to eliminate those. And if I can save a dollar or two in a process that's repeated by 30 people in my office, you know, 100 times a day, that dollar is going to drop to the bottom line going to see that in bigger profits. And then technology itself, whether or not that's automated completely or a hybrid um, system where there's reminders going out to trigger certain manual processes like phone calls, that's all taken care of there. And then that, that system, these people, this process and this technology should all be integrated to have effective growth in your organization. Ultimately, we look for the outcomes and uh, we have three outcomes for every single event we do. They're gonna opt out, they're gonna remain in, or they're gonna make a full commitment to the uh, to you as a company uh, or to your product. Continuous engagement improvement begins with that idea of engagement being part of the process. So without a plan, any road will get you there. And that's where we're at here. Any plan will get you there, I'm sorry, any road will get you there without a plan. And as the old saying goes, those who fail to plan, plan to fail. I, I mean, these things roll off my tongue because they're very practical adages. They're, they're wonderful rules of thumb to remember because if, if you don't have your campaign laid out for um, you know, a product launch or a webinar or seminar or an event that you're doing, things like that, if that's not laid out, you're going to leave too many things on the sideline to happenstance. Who's going to update the media page on the website? Who's going to post to social media? Who's going to handle the format and the messaging and the emails? Who's going to do the follow-up phone calls if there are any? Are we going to do any 
regular USPS uh, mailings, you know, through a fulfillment house. Uh, and these are all uh, not left to chance with proper planning. And you certainly have uh, organizations uh, that are defined around those models. I, I can't talk to any of them in, in this particular environment, but you know, we're networking here today and you can link in with everybody who's in the conference and start a communication or some sort of conversation there. So if we use CRM as the basis of our integration uh, and we look at some of the things it provides us, I don't know if you recognize Alfred Newman there, that's the Mad Magazine guy, right? Back in the day. Um, we have the ability to uh, maintain a log of all of our activities in our relationships. We can maintain addresses. We can manage documents related to that. Um, not quite sure why that went backwards. Uh, but the beautiful thing about CRMs is that if they're really effective uh, and they're effectively used, we have sales workflows. So we can go from a proposal to Alfred's um, company here, the Acme Roadrunner company. And uh, we can extract the pricing of this information and actually put that in as an opportunity, which gets us to the point of the conversation. Once we have the infrastructure in place, we can go in and literally create the opportunity, define what it is, assign our rep to it, put in a decision date, estimate the value of the contract, where it's at in terms of likelihood, and just get it into the system. This is, I would say, in more than 80% of my needs assessments with SMBs and even enterprise level sales organizations. And I'm talking big guys, whether it's Century Insurance or Kimberly Clark, some of our larger enterprise clients. This is all done in spreadsheets. Very few people actually build it around a good sales funneling tool in their environment. And it's a shame because if it's integrated through your CRM, well, now you've got instantaneous reporting of what's active, one lost and inactive. And we can filter these things by, you know, the company or by the rep. And in this particular case, this, this funneling tool allows me to see my decision date who my contact is. It's obviously hyperlinked so I can go to his record quickly. Um, the company, the product they're after, which can ideally be integrated with your um, inventory system, whether that's in QuickBooks, Premier, Enterprise, all the way up to SAP, HANA, uh, R3, uh, earlier implementations. That can all be integrated directly with your system. And then uh, when it was last updated, this particular one updated today, we're at a proposal stage with a 75% likelihood who the rep is, the value, and extend that out. This is a complete customization. That report then can be extended for everybody in the system. In this case, it can produce the Excel, PDF, or Word document right out of there and give you a total of all your opportunities and provide this as a tool to see what's past due, what's current for all of your opportunities sorted by the sales rep or for the entire company. This just happens to be the last two lines of a much longer report. So I see that my value of opportunity here in my proposals or whatever I have going out there is about $36,000 with a 38% chance of happening right now and part of that is because a lot of these either have a 0% on here or they decrement. Our, our sales funneling system that we use and we've developed for clients actually drops a percentage point a day after the initial proposal. So you basically have a window. If I say it's 100%, I got about 100 days to close that deal. If I put it at 30%, I'm only gonna have 30 days to close that deal. The point is it calculates an extended dollar amount. And I can really see how likely that is. From an objective analytics point of view, is it truly predictive analytics? Not by itself, but as far as managing the funnel goes, seeing the past dues very quickly, which are highlighted here in orange, and being able to see by, by representative, all, some or none, uh, or one, uh, what their 
look at businesses that predict it and how likely they're going to achieve it. It's all done in the system for me, even the decrementing. All I need to do is call the client or make sure they're tied into an orchestration process like we talked about last month. By the way, if you want to see what that is, the presentation from last month is up on our YouTube channel as well. And we can send you a link with that when we send out this video and, and upload that this evening. And you'll see what, what that really does for you. The idea being integration is the key. If you've got the sales reporting coming out and you've got the symphony set up with all of your little event notes, this is what we call it, sales orchestration, the music theme, the China, it's an interesting metaphor, obviously. Um, email one, phone call one, email two, phone call two, printed fulfillment here, and then the appointment that is set. All of that process, literally every part of this up to the point that the individual can click anywhere along that line or confirm in the phone call they want that appointment, that is the call to action. tied in with everything else you're doing in your business, nothing extra. In fact, if you set up the templates for the emails, the phone calls, the postal pieces that you have through a, a cooperative local printer that can get those out or a Vista print, all of that is automated. This entire process as we looked at last month is automated. So the key is having something here that my salespeople can keep up with. And that's why the sales funnel is important. So if you look at some of these marketing apps and platforms out here, out here you'll see various products. We, we provided them here. We provided them in the PowerPoint also that will be sent to you. All of this information is available to you um, as, as choice opportunities that most clients, most clients feel they have to piece together. And that's a time killer. If you have to create this process, it is a true time killer. So that's, uh, I, I presented this last month as well. So people have an idea of different tools. You might even be using them and how they're useful in terms of uh, search marketing or drag and drop creation of the campaigns. Uh, unlimited emailing, whether or not they integrate with CRMs, whatever the case might be. And you'll notice that they all have deficits. You know, some of them have more minus signs than others. In other words, there is no single solution that will solve this problem. So what's our takeaway? Our takeaway very simply is this idea of integrating your processes, understanding what it is you're messaging, who you're messaging to with an intentional deliberate outcome for each and every event you schedule. There should be nothing left to chance and then monitor that activity and the response rates that you get back. As you do that, uh, it's, it gets pretty exciting because uh, what, you're, what you're doing is freeing up your salespeople from the mundane data entry stuff that, that they really do not want to do. They want to be making the calls. They want to be pressing the flesh with the prospects, with the customers. Uh, you want to be able to uh, free up your salespeople to do sales. You want to free up your customer service people to actually do customer service. And so that data entry process begins with, like I said earlier, capturing the information electronically, processing it for accuracy, having your templates of your notes set up for your symphonies. So you can drop somebody into a symphony and have that play out over the next few weeks or months, ultimate leading to what? A sale at the end of the channel if you're selling something. But at the very least, a process that enables continuous engagement improvement because I think that is really the concern, right? We, we lose touch with our customers. We get too busy with things and all we do is we throw people and money at it and we put in these systems and in most cases they're ineffective in most cases. 
So there are solutions to that. Um, obviously, you can go to my website, Integrate for Growth, which was something I set up with the uh, brilliant Breakthroughs uh, publishers last year on our book. Um, it doesn't necessarily promote exact or our products. Some of you know what we do in detail. If you'd like to know more about that, feel free to reach out. If you have more generic questions in mind or would like to get more information, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to Jason, the guy, the guy uh, up in the upper corner there. And um, uh, we're, we're here to answer questions and solve your problems.